a little preamble before we start with the review. I cannot believe the media circus that has occurred because of this movie. Uh, over what? This should just be another Marvel movie coming out, and everyone's acting like an idiot over things that don't matter, complaining about a site whose fucking ratings mean nothing. So what I do, I go to the theater trying to ignore, ignore all these people. Of course, the theater sold out for Black Panther tickets. And then I think I can't see the movie today. It turns out I can because there's apparently an IMAX theater in a place called Jordan's Furniture. This is a real thing. There's this furniture store that has an IMAX theater in it. And while you're waiting in line, they try to sell you furniture. And then I get inside the theater and there comes Jordan himself, this guy. And he starts telling me how amazing the seats are, how they're made out of Tempur-Pedic foam. And the seat that you're sitting in <laughs> is made out of Tempur-Pedic memory foam to give you the most comfortable movie experience ever. And as if all that's not bad enough, I record this entire video and then I check it on my computer and the entire thing has no sound, so I have to record it again. And all of this, all of this stupidity of people yelling on this side going, I, uh, this movie's SJW propaganda, and then people on this side yelling, uh, the, the Rotten Tomatoes gives DC poor movie scores, so I'm gonna boycott Black Panther and give it bad reviews. And then people on this side going, oh, this movie's made for black people only, so if you're white and you see it, you're racist. And all of this, and, and I have to sit through Jordan trying to sell me fucking furniture and IMAX before the movie starts. And then, I see the movie and it's fine. I'll go through some good things first because I like staying positive. Let's try to stay positive here. Um, there's some good performances in this movie. I like Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther. I like Lupita Nyong'o in it. Um, a lot of the acting's pretty solid. There's some really neat production design. Uh, there's some cool music in there, especially in seeing it in IMAX, there's a lot of bass, so you really feel that. <clears throat> Two big issues Marvel has always had is uh, the music and the production design. There is a video complaining about the color palette of uh, Marvel movies, and they attribute that to the fact that Marvel has recently started shooting on digital, and they don't color correct the images correctly, when um, that's far from the only problem. The main issue is that Marvel movies are mostly set in gray, grim, interiors and exteriors it just kind of looks bland and flat and that's something that they've recently improved because you know the production design is now very colorful Thor is very colorful Guardians of the Galaxy is very colorful it's no coincidence that those are the two most gorgeous looking Marvel movies and they're set on two of the most exotic colorful planets and Black Panther is a very colorful movie uh, the visual effects are not good which we'll get into later but in terms of production design, the costumes are very nice. The, the sets are very well done when there are indeed sets and not bad green screen. I really did see the potential for certain things to be really cool. You know, I, I see where you could take these characters and make them more interesting. I see where you can take this world and build on it and make it more interesting. That being said, I mostly found this movie kind of dull. They played it safe. And what we have, as a result, is a very bland movie. Everything is good on paper. You know, characters have motivations, characters have reasons for doing things, and there are certain elements that, you know, are absent from other movies, especially of this ilk, that are included in this movie. But they don't feel organic, and they don't feel... feel anything. <laughs> I didn't feel anything. That's the main issue, is that it felt like a checklist. I would consider myself a Marvel fan. Like, I don't like all their movies, but I like the good ones. And I was genuinely curious as to why this movie has a 96, 97%, something crazy like that. It has higher than The Dark Knight, which is a masterpiece. So I looked at the reviews, right? Because I was curious. And when I put aside the 80,000 reviews that just talk about the political commentary, and half of them, of course, say political, 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 political. One review said, Black Panther is the best movie of the year. Best movie of the year. We're in the middle of fucking February. Like, duh. Yeah, it's better than- You know what? It is the best movie of the year. It's better than Cloverfield Paradox, and that's the only other movie I've seen this year. What an accomplishment. I don't think a lot of these critics understand what makes superhero movies good. I think they see these dumb movies 
and they go, yeah, they're dumb, and they're stupid, and they're cliche, but I had a good time, and the audience liked it, so I give it a 10 out of 10, and we're gonna move on. They don't understand why I love comic book movies. And I'm much more lenient on comic book movies than I think most people are, because I... I appreciate them for what they are. What they are is mainstream entertainment. For, for that are, it's meant to appeal to the entire planet, basically. And for what they are, Marvel movies are incredibly creative and funny and interesting and consistent in quality, you know? And I think that's just something we should commend them for, is that they don't pander to dummies. And I think the studio executives, I think the critics, I think Ryan Coogler as a director to a certain extent had a checklist of shit that they had to do and they checked it all off. Yeah, Black Panther has a motivation. We need him to be a little bit conflicted about being a king. Let's write that in there. And you never feel any of it. You never feel Black Panther's struggle. You never feel his conflict trying to balance being a warrior and being a king. It's in there a little bit. You know, in a movie like this, I should feel the weight of the world on Black Panther's shoulders. Like, oh my god, this guy, he's young, he doesn't know what he's doing, and he has to handle all these complicated political things. He has to make allies. All the things that come with being a king. And instead, we don't focus on any of that. We focus on the least interesting elements. Black Panther should be like, I'm a great warrior, but I'm not good at being king, so I have to learn to be king. Or do vice versa, where he's really good at being a king because he's a nice guy, but he's not good at being a warrior. And he's not strong or something. Like, you need to give this guy some conflict, but it seems like he's good at doing both. Because he's, he's an excellent warrior, and he's basically invincible for this entire movie. People shoot him in the head, like, no issue. But then at the end of the movie, people are hitting him with swords and punching him, and you're supposed, you're supposed to feel tension? Why? People shot him in the head! This movie, he's invincible. He's punching through waves of guys, like nothing. And the only time he struggles a little bit is when the script needs him to. At the, you know, it's the end of the second act, it's the low point. So now Black Panther's gonna have a hard time fighting. Why? For no reason, because that's what the, what the script needs him to do that. The characters in this movie are so weak. All good on paper. Oh, this guy's gonna do this thing. Do we have time to develop that? No. Do we have time to really understand and feel for this character? No. Michael B. Jordan, his character, as written, is a great character. You know, he's a guy... He, he doesn't like the Wakandans because they k k did something to him. I'm not going to spoil it because I know some people want to see it. You know, they did something to him. They betrayed him, so he's angry about that. And you understand his character. But the thing is, Michael B. Jordan is not good in this movie. I did not buy him in the role at all. If, in fact, he's probably the weakest actor in here. Which shocked me because I usually love Michael B. Jordan and everything he's in. But watching him, it was like he was having flashbacks to fucking Fantastic Four. Like, oh my god, I can't mess this up again. I can't ruin my career again. This is my last chance. And you know, you get 10 minutes with this villain to, to establish his motivations and everything, but you never feel for him or understand him or anything because it's barely developed. It's so ham-handed and hokey and phony and like a checklist. Forrest Whitaker in this movie does the same thing he does in every movie. He's the old guy who's wise and gives a few speeches and then he the same thing he does in Rogue One. It's like Disney just dredges him up. Oh, we need the mystical, magical guy. So why don't we bring him in to give two speeches and then we'll If there's one word for this movie, it's inconsistent. Everything is inconsistent. Some of the effects are great. Some of them are terrible. Some of the music's great. Some of it's bad. Some of it's good, but it doesn't fit within the scene at all. Like there are scenes, there's a big dramatic scene where there's a betrayal going on. And in the background I hear Why are we playing this music during this dramatic scene? Some of the melding of African culture and futuristic technology was really interesting. You know, like the Black Panther suit or the, you know, the drugs they take to give Black Panther his powers or whatever. There's stuff like that that's really neat. But then there's some stuff, there's this group of people who have these capes that create a, a CGI force field in front of them and it looks so stupid. I, I think critics just look at it like, oh yeah, it's another fun Marvel movie without understanding that like movies like Spider-Man Homecoming or, or Iron Man are just good movies on their own. They're creative and fun and exciting and they try new things and they have scripts that are funny 
and have twists and turns in them and and style and this movie like i was so disappointed because i love ryan coogler as a director he made this movie fruitvale station which is terrific and he made a, the movie creed which is so much better than it has any right to be because ryan coogler is amazing at what he does. He knows how to work with actors really well. He knows how to shoot scenes. He has a really interesting aesthetic. He shoots in like 16 millimeter and it's lots of handheld. Like, hey, Ryan Coogler, everything that made your style interesting, the 16 millimeter, the handheld, great performances, interesting characters, we're gonna strip all that away. Here's our script, which is the same Marvel shit written by eight other guys. Ryan Coogler had to strip away everything that made him Ryan Coogler, the filmmaker. He had to get rid of the 16mm, obviously. He had to get rid of the handheld. And that's why it's so bland feeling, is that he doesn't know how to make a film like this. He doesn't know how to direct giant action scenes. He doesn't know how to incorporate VFX into his movie so it feels organic. He doesn't know how to incorporate them into the environments and the sequences. He doesn't know when to use practical and when not to. He doesn't know what to fight for with this studio. So it all feels bland. And just because you can make a really great indie film, does not mean you can make a $200 million, you know, Marvel movie. You know, the action scenes where Ryan Coogler shines are the more practical ones. The ones where Black Panther's just shooting at a guy or like a car chase done with real cars, you know. But then you got the action scene at the beginning, which is Black Panther fighting at night in the mud with other guys. And it's all handheld and it's cutting quick. You can't make out what's going on at all. And then you got the action sequence at the end where everyone's invincible. There's no blood. Someone's throat gets slit and it's a close up and there's no blood coming out of them. And, th and then Michael B. Jordan and Black Panther fight. And it's, it looks like a PS2 video game. This movie is scene after scene of people just talking. The acting's whatever. The dialogue isn't all that good. The way it's shot, it's, you know, shot reverse shot and one of the biggest sins of this movie is that it takes itself way too seriously you know a lot of these marvel movies they strike the perfect balance of being comedic and silly and knowing what they are which is big dumb comic book movies but also establishing stakes and characters that take these stakes seriously and this is not a balance this movie strikes the humor falls completely flat for the most part. There is one character, the character who is the king of the other tribe, that I found entertaining. He has some good lines toward the end. This movie takes itself way too seriously and acts like it's way more important than it is. People were talking about the political commentary, obviously in all the amazing Rotten Tomatoes reviews. And I can see Ryan Coogler, because he's an amazing filmmaker, trying to push Marvel like, I want to have this political commentary in there. And Marvel's pushing back like, yeah, but we need to sell this movie to one billion people. So we can't have too much of that. And the, eventually the balance they struck was this. The, the political commentary of this movie, um, for the most part, there are a few other little things in there. Just uh, such as, you know, cutting yourself from the outside world and working with other countries. But those things are so briefly touched on. The f I, like, I barely remember them. The main thing in this movie, the bad guy's motivation, which falls in line with the political commentary of the film, is Michael B. Jordan wants to kill all white people because they've been oppressors through most of history. You know, the movie doesn't say it like that, but that's basically what they say. And Black Panther goes, no, you can't do that, that's messed up. What an amazing political message. Wow. You mean we shouldn't kill everyone of an entire race? That's crazy. I, you know, I don't think everyone's going to agree with that. That's a crazy message that no one can get behind. Like, what? I think the, the Lego movie had more relevant political commentary than this movie does. Are you kidding me? This whole story is just predictable and formulaic. All of the characters... Just do whatever. Black Panther is not that interesting of a character. Uh, honestly, th that struggle of, you know, him balancing being a king and a warrior isn't there. I never felt the weight of the world on his shoulders. You know, there's a there's a point in this movie where he's just absent for 15 minutes. He, he can kill anyone. He can fight anyone unless the script doesn't need him to in a certain scene. He is completely morally justified and right and everything. And then you have his sister character who's there just to be a gadget dispensary and a meme dispensary too. Uh, her jokes consist of uh, just reciting memes like, what are those? And uh, what else is there? Oh yeah, I whip my hair back and forth. That might not have been her, it might have been someone else, but 
Oh my god, it was so bad. The humor in this movie is so bad. The movie reminded me a lot of Skyfall. There's a lot of similarities. We have the Q character, who is the sister in Black Panther. A very similar story of, like, betrayal and revenge. Uh, there's the club scene in Skyfall that's, like, you know, they go to, like, a casino slash bar. And they, you know, do a little espionage on it. And there's the same thing in Black Panther. But, you know, Skyfall is exciting and gorgeous, and the acting is great, and the characters are awesome. And this is just like, yeah, whatever. There's lots of elements here that could work, and that help prop up this movie, and make it something more than most of the DC movies. Uh, in fact, all of the DC movies. But it's... it's lacking in so many areas. It hits all the check marks these movies have to hit, but at the end of the day, it's just not a good script. It's not a good story. The dialogue is bad, the characters don't really go through anything all that traumatic or life-changing. Black Panther as a character doesn't struggle as much as he really needs to to be an interesting person. Uh, for an origin movie, there isn't a lot of origin in it. Like, the movie starts and he's Black Panther already, and he's the king, and, you know, he doesn't have to earn it, he just is the king now. And, you know, instead of focusing on this burden of responsibility, he goes off to another country and fights guys in a club and gets in a car chase. And there's no tension because he's Black Panther. It was just whatever, it was so dull. I didn't, I didn't buy his character, I didn't buy the action sequences, I didn't buy the world all that much, you know, I like some ideas within it, but it, it all looked so artificial and phony like it was shot in a green screen room. Could they have just gone to Africa and shot there? In some ways, Wonder Woman, which I think is a worse movie and a way more pandering stupid movie than this is, even that has more memorable moments than this, I think. I mean, sure, Wonder Woman's simplistic message of female empowerment, while the, the fucking lead character is an adult who stumbles her way around most of the movie, it's, is way more pandering than um, Black Panther is. It, Black Panther never felt pandering. It never felt anything. That's just the thing. It did nothing offensive, but it did nothing it, exceptional. So I was just there, like, can this movie do something interesting? Martin Freeman, I don't know what the hell he was in the movie for. He felt like... A, a viewpoint character like a character that shows up at the beginning of the movie and we have the Wakandans explain their culture to him you know except Martin Freeman shows up halfway through the movie and he doesn't get to Wakanda till the last third or fourth of the movie and they explain everything to him then but the audience already knows that all this shit and then they go, oh, he used to be a pilot. And I'm like, oh, golly gee, I wonder if this is going to come into play later. And then at the end of the movie, he has to autopilot this jet that's shooting at other jets. That It just doesn't... And then Martin Freeman is finished shooting at the jets, and they start shooting at him. And he's like, I gotta get out of here. And he runs out of the room, and you never see him again. Same thing with Black Panther's mother. Black Panther goes to some guy like, hey, can my mother stay with you? And he goes, yeah. And then you never see the mother again. Like, what, characters just disappear? There's some elements here that, that really can work and be used in future movies with better scripts and better character writing, but this movie is made for Marvel fans who are completionists, you know, who want to see every movie regardless of the quality. It's made for Black Panther fans, and it's made for little kids, especially little, you know, black kids who don't have a lot of superheroes to look up to. This is a good movie for them, you know? For that, it's fine. You know, on my scale of Marvel movies from best to worst, it's around here. Like, in terms of writing, it's about on the same level as Doctor Strange, which had a very weak script. But at least Doctor Strange had some amazing visual effects and action sequences that are very creative to make up for it. And this movie just kind of had nothing. It's not awful, it's just a miscalculation, mostly. That being said, I give this movie a 10 out of 10! Yes! 10 out of 10, baby! The movie was so good, I left the IMAX theater, I went to Jordan's office and Jordan's furniture, I'm like, get me the biggest toilet you got, so I can hunch over it and just cry all night, because this movie was so profound. <laughs>